We have an example problem here. It tells us three long wires parallel to the x-axis carry currents as shown. If I is 20 amps, what is the magnetic field at the origin in terms of magnitude and direction? So by saying I is 20 amps, this top wire is labeled as 4I. So 4 times 20 means there's 80 amps up here. I'm not even going to worry about the logistics of having 80 amps. That's awfully large. But anyway, so 80 amps. 3I means there's 60 amps of current in the middle wire. And then I means this bottom wire has 20 amps. Since they're labeled as long wires, parallel, so these are long straight wires. So we can use the B of a wire in the test notes. It's written as mu naught I over 2 pi D. But again, D just means the distance from the wire to the point we're trying to calculate that magnetic field. I'm going to call this top wire wire 1. The middle one, wire two, the bottom one, wire three. So the overall magnetic field at the origin is simply going to be the magnetic field due to these three individual wires added together. Simply add them up. This equation gives us the magnitude only. It does not give us a direction and we're running into my computer, getting really slow again. So the magnitude is not terribly hard to find. So B1 mu naught, I remember the exact value, 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. The units are Tesla meters over amps. The current in wire one is 80 amps divided by two pi the D, the distance. So we're trying to find the field at the origin right here. So the distance D1 is simply the distance from where wire one is to the origin. So two meters. It doesn't matter that we have to go down below in terms of distance. Distance, we just, the number, how far. The direction matters in terms of the right-hand rule and determining the direction of the field at that point, which we'll talk about that in just a sec. Let's just find the number here at the moment. So 2 pi simplifies that to a 2. So let's see. So I'm getting 8 times 10 to the negative 6 Teslas. Or I could write that as 8 micro Teslas. That's totally fine as well. So that's just how strong the field is due to wire 1. That's not the direction. The direction comes by solving the right-hand rule or using the right-hand rule. As a reminder, we put our thumb in the direction of the current. So this arrow here is pointing to the right. So put your thumb, point it to the right. So your right hand, you point your thumb of your right hand to the right. Your fingertips show that the magnetic field is circling this way. Your fingertips are pointing at you if they're above your thumb. They're, if you want to twist your wrist down while keeping your thumb to the right, your fingertips would point away from you below your thumb. Well, the point, the origin is below our thumb so this magnetic field, B1, is going to point in to the screen at that location. So B1 points in. Into the screen, 
is the same thing as the negative k hat direction in this coordinate system. They've told us that x is to the right, the x-axis, y-axis, positive points up. That means the positive z direction would be pointing out of the screen. Since this field points into the screen at that location, then this magnetic field is in the negative k hat direction. Now remember the field at a given point is just tangent to the circle. So we have to find the circular path of the field. That's what this represents is the circles around the wire. But the point I care about is below. So tangent to the circle at that location would point into the screen. Wire two, same equation. Different current and a different distance. Different distance, this wire is a distance of one meter away from the origin. We don't put in negative one, we just want the distance. The fact that the wire is at negative one is going to come into play in determining the direction of the field, but this equation in and of itself, we just want the distance. So two, 120, so 12, or 120 times 10 to the negative seven Teslas, or 12 micro Teslas is the magnitude. This is bigger because it's closer. It's closer to the origin. Now the direction, the arrow representing the current points to the left. That means we need to take our right hand, take our thumb of our right hand and point it to the left. When we do that, and we think of the loops, well, my thumb pointing to the left, my fingertips now point away from me on top, and they would point towards me below my thumb. So the magnetic field around this wire is making circles coming up and going down and back. The point I care about, the origin, is above it. So tangent to the circle right above it would be away from me. B2, this magnetic field, points away from me, which again is the negative k hat direction. So the right hand rule tells us which way the magnetic field circles the wire. And then we have to think about what that means at a specific location. So in this case, the point we care about is above the wire. So tangent to that circle would be directly away. B3, same equation. Oh, just magnitude first. So mu naught, the current down here is 20 amps. The distance from the wire up to the origin is three meters. Again, we don't put the negative sign. We just want the distance. This one I will want my calculator for. So 1.33 times 10 to the negative six Teslas, or 1.33 micro Teslas, direction. So the arrow down here is pointing to the right. If I take the thumb on my right hand, I need to point it to the right, my fingertips are curling this way. So towards me, above my thumb, away from me, below. The point I care about is on this side, up here. It's above the wire. So tangent to that circle would point out at me. 
that would be the positive z direction. Now, something that might give a better view, let me change our view. Let's look at the wires. From the right. So if we were standing such that our eyeballs, weird picture I know, is looking from the right, each wire would be a dot. Okay? The top wire, the current would be. Okay, so if I put my thumb and point it towards me, my fingertips are showing that a circle would go counterclockwise. The point I care about is right down here, which is the origin. So tangent to the circle right directly below would be to the right from this viewpoint. But again, if my face is right here, to my right would be into the screen from looking at the wires from this side, from the original picture. This would be the negative Z direction. Something pointing to the left would be the positive Z direction. The middle wire from this new viewpoint would be carrying current away from me. I away. If I put my thumb away from me, my fingers show me that these circles around the wire are going to be clockwise. At the origin, the point right above it, tangent to the circle, would be to my right. That's why this one is also negative k hat. Oops. Finally, the bottom one would be carrying towards me. Oops. Sorry, the delay my computer is giving me is affecting my pictures here. So the magnetic field would circle this wire going counterclockwise. If I imagine drawing a circle big enough to go through the origin, counterclockwise exactly at that location would be to my left. So positive k hat. So sometimes it can help to just change our view which direction we're looking for. The total magnetic field is just adding these together. This bottom one being positive, the other two being negative. So let's see. I'm getting negative 8 or I guess I should round, so 19 microteslas k-hat. So 19 microteslas, the negative is actually representative of the direction. The overall magnetic field at the origin due to these three wires points in the negative z direction. It points into the screen. It has a magnitude of 19 microteslas. Okay. I got 18.67, but I'm rounding, of course, because we don't have that many significant figures. And technically, we only have one. So overall magnetic field, we can simply add the fields due to each wire, but we do have to account for each direction the direction of each wire's magnetic field individually before we add.
because again, magnetic field's a vector. Vector addition, we must use vector components to add.